Welcome to Preacher Report. Preacher Report. Preacher Report. Preacher Report. Hey, all right, we're starting with the goats. Really exciting news about the goats. The four does are either bred or in the process of getting bred. So, Hermione back there and Snowball, I'm not sure if she's in the frame or all white one there, have already visited a buck and we saw them get pregnant and confirmed with the owner of the buck that they were both bred many times, more than they needed. The buck was very excited. So we have two pregnant uh, does already and Poppy and Daisy are at that farm now, still with the buck. They haven't gone into heat yet. We've got Thanksgiving and some Thanksgiving travel coming up. So they're gonna be there two, maybe even three weeks. And we'll just confirm that they go into heat and get bred. And then mark your calendars because April 11th and 12th, the first two girls should have babies. And later in April of 2022 would be the other two girls. So we are so excited for that. Baby. It's been, we've had goats for over a year now and we just had that one failed birthing. Mm -hmm. And so we're really excited for these oh. girls to give birth. And so to reiterate, we're focusing on breeding Kiko goats, which are a hardy goat from New Zealand stock. Goats that had been turned loose in New Zealand and just thrived in the wild. And then these modern Kiko goats are those New Zealand goats crossed with a bit of meat uh, breeding goats from North America, I believe. Long story short, they're supposed to thrive the way we're managing them. Just leave them out here to eat brush, minimal shelter, and have their babies outside, all that stuff. So really excited about that because then we can really grow our herd and get to the point where we're keeping our own breeding stock and managing it all. But this is a huge first step. And uh, the girl that we're working with, her name's Sylvia. She has a YouTube channel called Silver Pine Kikos. So if you're curious and want to see her setup, you could look at that. And her buck is named Santiago. He did a good, a good job. He's a pretty big boy. He's, he's the same age of, as our girls, a year and a half old. But he stands quite a bit taller than them. Sylvia said he's probably 150 pounds. He's a, he's a big boy. And he's like the same color as Snowball. Yeah, he's mostly white. So we'll see what if we get much color or not. So that, that's the big thing with the goats. And so again, we've got four girls getting pregnant. Niblet here is just a weather, which means a castrated male. He gets to just live out his days. And then Lavender. Out, being part of the team. And Arya's here with Lavi. See if you can get her to follow you over here. Lavender is a, a Kiko doling we're really excited about, but she's too young to breed this year. So a year from now, Thanksgiving time of next year, it'll be her turn to get bred. And then we'll, we'll continue a cycle of every, you know, next year our four girls will get bred again, plus Lavender. And then we'll, it'll just kind of go exponential from there. And we'll get to a point where we have as many goats as we want and we sell or eat the excess. So that's the story with the goats. Do we have anything else to say about that? Not about the goats. They're doing good. And Maple and Lila are doing great as always. They keep the goats safe. Oh, one note, Maple, we can tell, is really bonded to the goats because she was whining and crying every time we took two goats out of this pen to take them to be bred at Sylvia's place. Maple was so upset and bothered that her goats were gone. So it was a little frustrating in the moment, but thinking about it, it's good that she's, she's alarmed. It's something's wrong if goats are leaving. So I just wish she understood if we're taking the goats, it's okay. <laughs> All right, that's the goats. All right, time for the pig update. So that is Princess, who is our fourth of our four girls that was pregnant and had babies. And unfortunately, she's the only one that really didn't do well. Uh, I was traveling for work and Tina texted me or called me or a little of both and she found a dead piglet after Princess delivered. And over the course of a couple days, ended up dealing with four dead piglets. 
So the best we can tell is that Princess had five and lost four. But she delivered just a couple days after Buttercup, who you might have seen in the last video, had had seven babies successfully. We're not 100% sure if maybe one of Buttercup's babies was lost and two of Princess's survived. It's hard to say. One of the issues might have been Princess, rather than settling in her own nest, she barged into Buttercup's nest and that's where she had her babies. And we're wondering if it was too crowded and some of them were crushed or stepped on. But the best Tina could tell, at least two of the deaths looked like stillborns. There was still umbilical cord on them, and she thinks that maybe they were just born dead. So, that was a bummer, but there are eight healthy little piglets. We're calling them the tinies, since we have piglets that are kind of at weaning age. And then these tiny ones that are a few months away from weaning. And you can see how they're co-parenting. So Princess only had one or two of hers survive, but a minute ago she was nursing all eight. And now Buttercup is laid down, and one of them is on her. So kind of bummed out about how Princess's delivery went, but overall for this year of pigs and having four mamas deliver babies, it went so well. We're so excited about just how much we enjoy pigs. And now moving forward, we'll kind of raise out these that we have so many piglets you know we have 15 piglets I would love to be able to sell some of them some of them as weaned piglets but I haven't had much success when I tried through Craigslist to sell piglets and I'm wondering if it's because we're heading into winter it's mid-November now that's not a time typically that people think of buying some piglets I think springtime would be more when people are looking for piglets so we'll raise these out. Um, we're looking forward to trying some of this pork from females or castrated males because we had our adventure with eating the boars and the issue with boar taint. So we're looking forward to having really tasty pork. And then we'll see from there. This little Cooney Cooney breed, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking seriously about a year or two down the road when we're breeding pigs again bringing in a breed that's a little bigger. So I'll think about that. The downside of a bigger pig is they're not as safe for the kids to be around. You know, they're even more destructive on the ground and more feed intensive. We'd spend more money on feed. So there's pros and cons of every breed. So we'll see. But the really exciting thing is just how much we love pigs. Just pigs are a really fun animal. They're a really smart animal. They're easy to manage. This this wire setup is really easy to handle. And pigs are so cute. So that is the update on the pigs. We're, we're moving them in these kind of areas. As soon as it started raining, anywhere that we've had the pigs that has grass, They've really rooted up the grass more than we would like, so we're trying to be careful to put them on brushy blackberry areas, and they can root as much blackberry up as they want. So, so that's what's going on right now. Maybe someday when we've got really lush pastures and you know grass that's a foot or 18 inches tall, we'll try grazing pigs on that and see if they just eat grass like a cow or a sheep would. But, uh, but we'll see. For now, we need to be careful to have them not just dig up our grass pasture. Here we go! Alright, so, how are the chickens doing? We're having the significant dip in egg production you would expect with the colder weather. It was the worst we've ever had it. We've had chickens for a few years, and we were really not getting many eggs. Around the time we had them out in the woods and they were just going wild. We thought we were just missing a lot of eggs that they were hiding them and that was some of it but they also started molting and just stopped laying eggs. Mm -hmm. So our most reliable layers are these white chickens laying the white eggs. We're still getting three or four white eggs a day mm -hmm. but there was a period of at least two or three weeks where we didn't get a single green egg from all these black chickens and we have a lot of black chickens. <laughs> yes, we do. But that should come around. And we get one brown egg a day. 
We have two girls that lay brown eggs. No, we have more than two girls that lay brown eggs. We have four or so. So, long story short, um, we're bummed about how many eggs we're getting, and I think the solution moving forward is we probably got too focused on Gandalf's breed, the Americana with the colored eggs. That's fun, but more than half of our flock should be layers that really are just consistent because we're spending a lot of time and money on these chickens. We want to get some eggs in return. Although we don't spend near as much time anymore because Jarvis built this wonderful coop that is so self-sufficient and it, it's been great. Yeah, we're really happy with how easy it is to manage the chickens now. The automatic waterer and the automatic feeder mean that our daily chore with the chickens could be as short as five or ten minutes. But we like being out here, so we spend more time in that. We throw them scraps every day. We collect the eggs. It's going really well. And moving the chickens is so much easier because the night before we move them, I close that door and lock them all in. And then the next morning, it's not a rush. They have everything they need in there, food and water. So if we're busy that morning and don't move them until 8 or 9 in the morning, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And then we just move the fence to the next spot. I pull it with the tractor, and they're in their next spot. So really happy with that. And that's the state of the chickens. So the when we're thinking about adding more chickens, Tina and I have been talking about it. And we like a number of our flock, probably around 36 chickens or so. And we think that what we should do is have a rotation where we add at least 12 chicks every year and then slaughter the 12 oldest hens that are way past our time. Thank you, Gandalf. So, so we'll add 12 and get rid of 12 every year and have a constant cycle of, uh, of chickens to make sure that they're laying well. And that's our plan. And when, when the time comes, we'll let you know we, we enjoy hatching eggs, but like I mentioned, we probably shouldn't focus too much on just those Americanas, and we'll probably buy in some more white chickens and some good brown egg layers, mm -hmm. and we'll just do some research and ask around and see which chickens are the most reliable layers for, for people around here, and go from there. But the one thing we're especially happy with is places where the chickens have been over the last year and a half. The grass is just darker green. There's no way around it. Where where the chicken tractor has sat and a bunch of chicken poop has fallen on the ground, that is some green grass that grows under there. So we're really happy with that. I remind myself, even if we're not getting as many eggs as we want sometimes, they're doing good work for us just fertilizing as we move them around. So that's the story with the chickens. And I guess we'll call that good for Yay! the creature report. All the pets are doing fine. Everybody's alive. And we just love the kitties. The, the two little kitties, Carrot and Frosting, are really fluffing up for the winter. They're so They're fluffy right so now. So I'll try to get some footage of them. They're so cute. Or I'll show a picture. I got a great picture of Carrot on a mushroom log that I'll try to show. <laughs> good boy. All right. That's our creature report. Yep. Happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you sometime after Thanksgiving. Bye. Bye. Hi, girls. Gonna go see a boyfriend. <laughs>
you having fun? Arya's having fun playing with you. I had it. Wait, hold still, baby. <laughs> nice hair. Nice hair, silly. Thanks. Oh, it's very fancy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you do yeah. have lovely hair. Hi. Hi, Ivy. Hi, Ivy. Hi, Ivy. Hi, Ivy. She's like, Hi, Ivy. <laughs>